Does fiber contain calories? Should we be concerned about it? And how much fiber should you be eating? Let's start by breaking down the two types of dietary fiber, soluble and insoluble. Soluble fiber dissolves in water and it forms a gel-like substance in our gut. And it can be fermented by our gut bacteria, which produces around two calories per gram. Some examples of soluble fiber include foods like chia seeds, which contain around 34 grams of fiber per 100 grams, and oats, which contain approximately 10 grams per 100 grams. Now, insoluble fiber does not dissolve in water and it adds bulk to the stool and aids in digestion by speeding up the movement of food through the gut. Now, insoluble fiber is generally regarded as non-fermentable. However, research has shown that certain gut microbes can break down various insoluble fiber components like cellulose and hemicellulose and potentially contribute a small amount of energy. Foods rich in these types of fibers are generally those with tough or fibrous textures, such as broccoli, Brussels sprouts, as well as the outer layers of various nuts, fruits, and seeds. The extent of this fermentation mostly depends on an individual's gut microbiome composition, with higher yields typically observed in those folks with fiber adapted gut bacteria. Some examples of insoluble fiber include foods like wheat bran, which contains around 42 grams per 100 grams, as well as flax seeds, which has about 22 grams of fiber per 100 grams. Now, do we need to worry about these hidden calories in dietary fiber? Well, in the UK and Australia, the calories from soluble fiber are included on food labels, and they are listed separately from the available or digestible carbohydrates. Here in the US, however, food manufacturers can choose to include or exclude fiber entirely, potentially leading to inaccurate calorie counts on products high in fiber, particularly those with high soluble fiber. But we don't need to stress. While fiber's contribution to total calories might not be reflected accurately on food labels, this is generally not something to be overly concerned about. And here's why. Foods that are high in fiber, such as fruits, vegetables, and whole grains are rich in essential nutrients like vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, which are important for a number of important physiological processes. High fiber foods are generally lower in calories and have also been shown to improve satiety, lower our cholesterol and regulate blood sugar levels. So the slight energy contribution from dietary fiber isn't likely to impact overall calorie balance in a significant way. Now, you might be wondering how much fiber should I be aiming for? Well, a recent review by McCown and colleagues in 2022 recommends consuming at least 28 grams of dietary fiber per day based on a 2000 calorie per day diet, which equates to approximately 14 grams per 100 calories. Or if you want to get real fancy, one gram of fiber per 71 calories. So to summarize my thoughts, if you live here in the US, calories from both soluble fiber and certain types of insoluble fiber, like hemicellulose and cellulose, may not always be fully or accurately accounted for on food labels. However, the small energy contribution from these fibers isn't something that we need to lose sleep over. Foods that are high in fiber are also packed with nutrients and are essential for promoting good health. And finally, when it comes to setting a goal for dietary fiber, aim for about 14 grams per 1000 calories with a focus on overall food quality and fiber rich whole foods.